All right, guys, so we got another big one on the bench today. This is the Stealth 360 frame from Rob FPV. So as the name implies, it's the invisible drone. And if you guys don't know what an invisible drone is, it's using some 360 cam. In this case here, I'm using the Insta360 1R. And um, you can also use the GoPro Max as well. That's another 360 cam that works with this frame. Uh, basically, as a 360 cam, and this drone using that in the way you would uh, stitch the video together in the editor you can basically um, have the, 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 the drone completely invisible in the video so you can actually look all around the drone and all 360 degrees and none of the drone parts are going to show up in the video so the way this works is it may, you know, basically the drone is very thin here so it's very flat and because of the way the camera is, you can see we have a 180 degree camera on one side and a 180 degree camera on the other side. And together, putting this together, you have a 360 degree field of view, but the center part here in the middle, right here, is not visible in the video. So anything that is within that range or height of the camera, in this case, the whole drone here, is not gonna show up in the video. So this is why it is so thin like this. I think uh, the limit's like around 22 millimeters, I believe, something like that, which also means that your battery selection is going to depend on, on that as well. So you're gonna want something that's going to w fit within that height requirements. So in this case here, I'm using a 1000 milliamp hour outline battery. This is one of those um, long range, uh, like cruising type batteries. It's not a high C rating, so which is fine for this one. You're not gonna be doing any acro tricks with this one here. This one, you can, in fact, you can do all the acro tricks flips and rolls and all that stuff uh, in post-processing. And I actually have a whole video already on the 1R camera, so I'm not gonna go over every little detail on this camera. You can watch that video if you wanna see how you can stitch video together, etc. all that. I talk about that in that video, so I'll link that down in the description. You can watch that later if you want, if you want to figure out how to use your 360 video. This drone here is gonna help you get that kind of same video, but you know, in that video when I reviewed the 1R, I put it on like a Cinewhoop and in, in certain angles as you look behind it and stuff and below, you clearly can see the entire drone in the shot. So it doesn't, doesn't look that great, you know, in terms of like trying to get that kind of capture that, that sort of 360 view all around, which is why these, I think, invisible drones are gonna be kind of the thing. Uh, I guess the trend, especially coming up here at the end of the 2020 and into 2021. Now this one here is um, built for five inch props. Although you can see here, that there's uh, plenty of clearance here between the props and between the end of the arm and the body of the drone. So in theory, you can go with a bigger prop, probably six or seven inch, um, but I don't believe there are any bigger props that take the T-style mount, you know, the two screws here on the motor, more than a five inch prop at this time. So perhaps in the future, if uh, a larger selection of props, bigger props are available, you could poss possibly uh, go to a bigger prop and get a little bit more efficiency and more flight time on the same battery, same setup. Um, but yeah, it's uh, basically limited to five inch prop because the motor needs to again be a certain height. And so if you use a standard motor with a M5 shaft, it's gonna stick out, the prop that's gonna stick out and that'll show up in your video. And you don't want that. So the drone build itself is fairly straightforward. You have a two millimeter bottom plate, a two millimeter top plate, you have four individual arms that are four millimeters thick. They're held in on the bottom here via these uh, two screws for each arm into some uh, press fit nuts right there. And uh, you have basically a, a few different ways you can put the drone together. Uh, in this case here, uh, there's a TPU mount for the 1R or the GoPro Max that goes in the front here. You just slide the camera in from underneath and it'll hold it. Or you can use uh, another TPU mount that actually uses the three-prong mount to hold the um, actual case that the 1R comes in. And I think the, the, the GoPro Max also comes in a similar case. And you can stick that in a configuration where the camera is in the back. So right now, the, I can see here the camera is in the front here with the FPV camera. Uh, you can actually use the other mount to put the camera in the back. And then uh, there's, there's going to be a mount here for putting the camera in the front. I guess this will be the front, but in my configuration, this is the back. 
Uh, but because the battery I had here doesn't all, you can see, kind of sticks over the end, I had to basically only build it this way here with the mount in front. There was multiple ways you can put this together. So uh, check out the link in the description to the website that will explain or show all the different ways you can put this together because it's a pretty versatile frame you can put together in a number of different ways. Okay, so I just wanted to uh, take the top plate off here and uh, show you the, the build here in a little bit more detail. So as you can see, I've used this race wire here because the actual motor wires aren't long enough to reach the flight controller area. So there's multiple ways you could configure this. So there's, um, let me show you the bottom plate here. There's holes for a whoop style mount or a 20 by 20 here and then the front or the back, I guess which, it depends on which way you look at it. And same here in the front or the back whoop style or 20 by 20, no 16 by 16 on this frame. And I build this out as a analog setup here, not a digital. So in the website, they do talk about a lot of different digital setups with Vista, et cetera. Obviously you put a Vista here and your uh, all in one flight controller up in the front or the back. And so there's obviously a myriad of ways you can put it together. I decided to go analog here because I just don't have enough um, DJI stuff right now. It's uh, in use that it's, it's being used on other drones I need to review, so I can't take that stuff off yet. But you can put it on here like this. Uh, I think I have this as like an iFlight uh, Micro Force VTX up to 300 milliwatts. I'm using it on my own Fox here antenna. And again, you want to keep everything nice and flat. So you can't have the antenna sticking up because then they'll show up in the video. So I have it set up like this where it's nice and flat and I have zip tied it to the arm here. It seems to be fine. Um, the analog video reception was pretty good. I, I, I was only on 200 milliwatts. I was flying around in a park and um, not too far away. So the video reception seemed pretty good. Um, again, back to the race wire thing, because uh, typically your motor wires aren't going to be long enough because these arms are very long. So you're gonna probably need some sort of race wire or something here, like, like an LED race wire to extend the, um, basically the, the motor wire length. So I have this here and then running to the different motor uh, wire pads on the flight controller. And I also built this, uh, well, I think this is a Beta FPV, yeah, so the Beta FPV uh, all in one board, the 20 amp version but I rotated the board because I wanted the power plug to go out the side here so that, again, to keep the uh, these parts out of the video, you have to sort of arrange it so that this is gonna be on the side and obviously out of the way of the props. So that's why I rotated this way. If you put it out the back, then it gets in the way of the battery here. And then the other reason is um, the USB port's gonna get blocked in a lot of situations. So you're gonna wanna be wary of uh, aware of how you orient your board so that you don't block your USB port. So you can see here, I've raised it up on some standoffs here so that uh, it's a little bit higher so that your USB port is still going to be accessible. Uh, I had it originally a little bit lower with some screws and kind of more flat, but then uh, the USB port was getting blocked by the motor wires in this race wire here. So I just put some uh, M2 standoffs there, raised it up, and then I ran all the motor wires underneath, as well as you can see all the other wires here. This is for the uh, video transmitter and camera. This goes in over here, and then I have this uh, wire here going from the video transmitter to the camera this way. And this brings me to this little connector here, which is a mistake on my part. Uh, I hadn't considered where this was going to be on, uh, I think it, it was like this. And so that, that connector there runs along the top right here, and it needs to be to almost completely flat. So when you build yours, you make sure that it's completely flat. Otherwise, it's going to show up in the very edge of the video here as it stitches this angle of the camera to the one on the bottom. And I didn't do that. And I kind of just, I don't know, I just, I didn't think about it at the time. I was like, well, I'll just, I'll just put the wire over the top. And it didn't look like it was really all that high. It was, it was flat along, it was flat along the uh, glass here. Um, so I didn't think it was going to show up, but it did. And it's, it, it's like the top half. You can kind of see like a little bit of this white piece here. So if you're going to build it, don't do this where you're running the connector like this. Uh, if you have a connector like this, I would say run it along the side, around around the side like this would be better. Or don't, you know, or, or don't use a connector. Just use like straight wire all the way through and then maybe don't even twist it like this. Just run it flat. Um, again, I don't think running it like this is probably the best idea because the wind will might flop up and down like this if it's not, if there's not tension on it. So um, I think running around the side might be better. So um, there's some things I think could be improved on this TPU print here. For example, once you put the camera inside, the power button and the record button isn't 
easily accessible. So the power button is going to be completely blocked. It's going to be right here. And then the record button is kind of over here. So you can kind of hit it a little bit through the TPU, but I would recommend putting like some holes here for the power record button. You can turn on the camera and then slide it through and mount it. So that's not a big deal. Uh, the voice record function is kind of hit and miss. I turned it on, but I could not get it to record uh, using the voice function for whatever reason. Uh, so I was able to hit the record button through the TPU, but it was not that easy. Again, uh, you know, this is sort of like um, version one of this drone. So I think there's definitely some things that could be improved on this one. I'll be passing along to Rob FPV and uh, maybe in the uh, future revision, I'll make some changes to this particular part here. But then it was not a big deal. I, I was still able to get the footage I wanted. And in terms of the um, the flying and everything like that, it's fine. I mean, I, I flew this on a four setup here. They're recommending a 2004 1950 KV motor on a 6S battery, which you can do. I think there's a China Hobby Line battery that they recommend. I use the uh, Beta FPV motor here. This is um, a 2004 3000 KV motor. So I was, running, I was able to run this on 4S. And on this 1000 milliamp hour battery, you can get a five minute flight time, no problem. So uh, you're not going to be doing like any acro tricks or anything like that with this one. Diving buildings or anything like that. It's not really meant for that. Um, and then for the pitch tune, I would recommend just uh, raising up your uh, PD balance and your PD gain. Um, and maybe a little bit of the master multiplier to get your eye gains up a little bit. That seemed to be fine. I didn't really do a lot of tuning in that. Just, I just kind of knew because these are smaller motors basically for a five inch and it's doesn't have a lot of authority you're going to want to increase your gains uh, on 4s at least to get a decent flying tune it seemed to fly fine in fact because you're running a 360 camera with the flow state stabilization on it any kind of weird um, tuning problems are not going to show up in the video whatsoever because that's all masked by the stabilization software uh, from insta 360. so you know in terms of getting a perfect tune on this it's not really necessary. Obviously you want it to be flyable and controllable. So if you just raise up your P and D gains and master multiplier, those things ought to get this thing flying totally fine. Okay, so in terms of getting the kind of footage you're looking for, uh, that's really up to you and your level of creativity and what you want to get out of it. Um, for me, I would suggest uh, flying this in areas where you have objects that are close and to the side and also above. So you, the park here I'm flying at, uh, flying uh, basically under some trees, and that's a good way of getting like some 360 video where you can look look around the drone, either through above or behind or around to the side, and you're gonna actually be able to see something in the video. Whereas if you fly kind of in an open area, it's not gonna be all that interesting. Okay, you look up, you're looking at a blue sky or whatever, or you're looking down, you're looking at the ground. Not that interesting, so. You're gonna see more useful scenarios for this in situations where you're flying around objects in close proximity and they're basically surrounding you in all directions, either above, below, and to the left and the right. And that's the kind of, I think, video that this kind of a drone is gonna be pretty cool for because you, what you could do is, you know, you might have um, a situation where you're flying in like one you know, path, but you could have multiple basically cuts of that path where you're looking at from the perspective of you know, looking ahead, or maybe you're looking above and looking up at the trees from below, like such, and get different perspectives all from the same uh, video file, basically. So I anyway, talk about all that in the review video on the 160R. Uh, go ahead and watch that video again. You get some ideas on what you can do. You can do kind of you can do all kinds of stuff, rotations and flips and rolls and just like things that you can't normally do from a normal FPV drone. You can do that with this sort of invisible drone. Anyway, so I'll link all of the stuff down below uh, where you can get the stuff. Um, he's got a website, Instagram, etc., and you can contact him there. I believe these are cut um, uh, a few days in, it, I guess, after you've ordered them. So uh, I think uh, they're not necessarily in stock like immediately. He might have a few, but if, if there's a lot large demand, you may have to wait a little bit because I think he gets the orders in, has them cut. It takes a few days, and then they'll, they'll ship out probably like three, four days after. So. Because uh, he's a small company, so he's not like he's got a lot of huge inventory and stock waiting to be shipped out. So if you're needing something like really right away, you should probably take that into account. That it might take a little bit of time to get this, uh, to get the frame cut and sent out to you. Okay, so that's gonna do it for this video. Yeah, let me know what you guys think of 360 drones in general, and invisible drones in general, down in the comments. I'm really curious 
if you think this trend is going to take off, um, I think we're going to see a lot more models like this because this camera is really interesting and, and they are in including more and more features into the camera where you can really make some interesting video because it is a 360 camera. You can see everything around the drone and these invisible drones are going to make that kind of more interesting. Anyway guys, this is going to do this for the video and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.